You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phone. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's go. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday. 12th day of August, 2019. Thanks so much for joining us, whoever you are, wherever you are. We're just glad to have you right here, right now. I'm putting a chart up as I speak of crude oil. Now, if you can't see the chart, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions, You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. When you're out of the office, away from the desktop, and you still want to join the show, point your browser to youtube.com slash cfrn slash live. There you will find a live, real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds, brought to you by the good folks at YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. All right. Now, we're looking back to Friday here <clears throat> on the September crude, GCLU 19. We had 
a couple of fingers pointing at the same spot. Now these areas of confluence and congruence, whatever label you want to give them, are always very important and they always are worthy of at least a second look. What happened, we had a concierge trade alert which was issued, well first we had the Logic 247 alert issued at 6.55 or 6.47 p.m. Eastern to consider being long September crude at 5290. Then the concierge trade alerts came out at 6.55 p.m. Eastern. The number there uh, consider being long September crude 53.10. So that's what I mean when I say confluence, congruence. Keep in mind that the concierge trade alerts, that's a static report based on previous price behavior. Logic 247 is a dynamic, in the moment, real-time alert based on current price behavior. Okay, Concierge previous price behavior Logic 247, current price behavior. Now, when those two line up, well, you can see what happens. This thing triggered, now again, it was Thursday, August 8th, 6.55 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, August 8th, 8th 6.47 p.m. Eastern. We didn't trigger until the following morning, Friday, August 9th, at 6 a.m. Eastern. This is a 30-minute candle. So it was during the life of this 30-minute candle that both of these triggered. Now, important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So look at what happens when we trigger. We come back to test the CTA entry and we almost touched the logic entry. So you got a leg, a retracement, and a continuation of the leg. Anyone who participated in this entering at the alert price of $53, 52.90, 53.10, so the average entry price, $53. If you stayed in the trade all the way to the exit signal, which printed at $54, and 48 cents. That's a $1,480 per contract move. For traders who've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, this was a $14,000 move. You know, the annual income, the annual income in some countries is not 14,800 US dollars a year. In fact, it's substantially less. Now, this isn't to tempt you if you're new to start trading in size more contracts than you understand above your pay grade, not at all. We <clears throat> use aggressive risk management, not only in our trade setups and our execution, but in the overall manner in which we approach this business of trading. It's all carefully detailed and documented in our 2420 blueprint. That's something that every passport holder and partner receives as soon as they come on board. The blueprint is designed to take you from 1 to 20 contracts over a period of 24 months. As we know, life happens. So for you to arrive there exactly 24 months later to the tick, so to speak, Chances of that might be just slim to none. If you're following the blueprint, you're certainly not going to get there any sooner. But unless you lead some incredibly charmed life, then I'm going to suspect that over that 24-month period, some things happened. Maybe somebody got sick. Maybe you had to go to the doctor. Maybe you took some vacations, holidays, you name it. So it takes as long as it takes. The beauty of the blueprint is that once you go live and 
we don't go live until we put together 10 consecutive days in a row in SIM where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less. Sounds pretty simple. Honestly, most folks don't make it the first time out. But that's okay because it takes as long as it takes. And what you're doing here is you're putting a firm, solid foundation beneath your trading business. We don't want to build a house of cards. We want to build a house on sand. We want to build that thing on bedrock. Okay? So 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less each day. Then the blueprint will give you the green light to go live with one contract. From that point forward, your goal is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Once that happens, the blueprint will green light you to add a second contract. Beautiful thing about the second contract and every contract after that is you're adding that contract with profit you earn in the market. It's not the market's money. If you think of it as the market's money or the house's money, well, that's where it's going to stay. Okay, so we, we got to get out of that mode of thinking. You earned the money trading in the market. Now you're deploying some of that money to add a second contract. New visitor. And as we go forward, as you go forward, every additional contract that you add will be underwritten by profit you earned in the market as long as you follow the blueprint. Okay. Now, the first two are merit-based. The first contract that you go live with, that's based on you having 10 consecutive days in a row in SIM. The second contract that you add is also merit-based. That's based on you increasing your account balance with that one contract by $2,000. Beginning with the third contract, you're on a calendar-based method or system. You'll know, you know what day you're going to add your third. Mark it on the calendar. It's in the blueprint. And the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, you know ahead of time. Now, there are going to be rough spots, rough patches. You're probably going to, at some point on your journey, step back into sim. Not a walk of shame. It's a smart business decision. Things have been going well. Maybe you've had a few good weeks, maybe even a few good months. And most of you, if you've been trading for any length of time, you understand what boom and bust trading is. You boom for a while, just killing it, man, day after day after day. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue, in two days, everything you earned it's gone or a good portion of it very demoralizing back to the drawing board start all over again if you follow the blueprint that won't happen because what will happen is as soon as you have two days back to back where you do not reach your goal in 10 trades or less you immediately go back into sim you book a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with myself or Michael, or even both of us if you want to. We troubleshoot, we take a look at the trades you took, we take a look at the charts, the market structure, and we do our very best to help you determine what happened. Now, it may not be your fault. The only thing you did wrong, perhaps, was enter the market at a time that was inhospitable for trading. Also, you might have entered the market even when conditions were favorable for putting on a trade everything that we look for was there the market just didn't do the next high probability thing instead for whatever reason be it a presidential tweet economic report market goes the other way now there's nothing you can ever do to stop that 
There, there's nothing to fix. That's just the truth about trading. Learning to handle that situation with grace, there's the magic, there's the secret. So you come off the live platform, you're back into sim, we do the troubleshooting, then maybe you spend a couple days in sim just to get your confidence back. Because your confidence when you're trading is very important and not overconfidence. You know, no, there's no room for egos here. But you must be confident that you know what to do and when you're supposed to do it. Without confidence, you'll hesitate and you won't do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. You step right back out where you left off. If you're on three contracts or five or seven, whatever the number is, you don't go back to zero and start all over again. After you've gone into sim and we've done the troubleshooting and you go back live, you just pick up right where you left off. So that process will probably repeat itself a number of times during the 24 month period, which will ineffectively turn your 24 months into 25, 26, 27, 36, whatever it takes as long as it takes. Now, once you hit five contracts, five, two points a day, that's $500 per day. If you're trading five contracts and you get two points, if you go five times two, that's 10 times $50 per point, it's $500 a day. That's $2,500 a week. It's 10 grand a month, 120 grand a year. Are you with me? Then that's all just a function of math. It has nothing to do specifically with our methodology or our strategy. It's just a function of math. So don't feel pressured to run with the big dogs. You don't have to trade 10 contracts or 20 contracts. Many traders are perfectly happy with taking a couple points a day out of the market with three contracts or four contracts or five. The beauty is, is you're building, you're building your business one step at a time on a firm foundation. So important. Now this exit signal, okay? Now the concierge trade alert that was sent out in Telegram as it is every night. Remember static report based on previous price behavior. Logic 247 issued each time there's an alert in Telegram in a separate channel based on current price behavior. All right, we're in, we're locked and loaded, we're climbing. Where do I get out? How do I know when to get out? New when visitor. The market is in an extended move. And this is certainly an extended move. Our indicators will point the way to the exit door. Let me show you. This black line here is called the step line. If you use your imagination, you can see how it might look like a set of steps. When it makes a decisive cross on a long trade, your CFMA1 will be blue and climbing as it is here. When your step line crosses over a decisive cross, not just back and forth like this, but truly crosses on a long trade, what you're looking for is the first red candle that closes below the step line. Now you see, here's a red candle, but it's above the step line. These are green candles. This is the first red candle that closes below the step line. And as you can see, price is starting to walk sideways here. That's almost always what you'll see when a move is running out of steam. The move may not be over, but it's currently running out of steam. The closing price of this candle, and these are 30 minute candles, is 54, 48, 54, 48. See that? Okay. So the distance between $53 and 
48. That's 148 ticks. At $10 a tick, $1,480 per contract traded. No confusion here, nothing nebulous. It's all crystal clear. You read the alert, you take action as you see fit because this is discretionary trading and of course you'll always make the decision whether you pull the trigger or not and you should never ever trade an alert just because it's an alert. No, no, what I want is I want you to go to the chart. I want you to look at that thing. I want you to see what I see. I want you to understand what I understand because that's going to eventually lead to you thinking the way we think, both Michael and I and Valerie, all of us, all CFRN traders, we're all on the same page. We're all on the same paragraph. We're looking for the same thing and taking the same action when those conditions present themselves. If you get an alert and you do not see anything on the chart that speaks to you, take a snapshot, book a mentoring session, bring it into the live training room the next day, get some clarity because we use the same setup across all markets and time frames our method is fluid across all markets and all time frames you'll start to see it pretty quick for some it's a few days some a few weeks again it takes as long as it takes okay but once you've got it once you see it it's a memorable day because you can never unsee it, okay? All right, enough about September crude, enough about last Friday. We have so much to talk about today, about last night. We had a great night, had a great day so far today. Conditions are ripe. Now, let me give you the numbers from around the world real quick, and then Michael will give us a recap of what happened in the live training room. These, again, are the cash markets around the world. We're going to start here in the U.S. Right now, the Dow is down 233 points, almost 1%. NASDAQ down 44, half of 1%. S&P 500 down 20 points, three quarters of 1%. And the Russell 2000 down 13 and a half points, almost 1%. In the commodity basket, crude oil up 23 cents, trading 54.73 last. Gold up $8.30. Go gold, trading 15.16.80 last. That's a gain of about half of 1%, both for crude and for gold. In the Asian markets, at the close, the Nikkei posted a gain of 91 points, half of 1%. Shanghai posted a gain of 40 points, and for the Shanghai, that's 1.5%. And the Hang Seng lost 114 points, down at the close about half of 1%. In the European markets, at the close, FTSE down 27 points, DAX down 14 points, and the CAC down 17 so no movers, no shakers in the European markets. That gave us a mixed day in Asia, New visitor. a red day in the UK, and so far, the big red radio Monday here in the US of A. Let's go to Michael, get a recap of what happened in the live training room. I'll be back. We're going to go over concierge trade alerts. We're going to go over the Logic 247 alerts. We're going to answer all of your questions. We're going to talk to John that and much more when I return. Michael, take it away. Okay, I got it. And I just sent Greg the meeting link. So, we have that scheduled too. Um, <clears throat> Alright. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, the 12th day of August. can't believe it's August already. 2019. Um... If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay.
today we lost eight ticks in the euro we made 14 ticks in crude six ticks in gold and four ticks on the es that put us at an even 200 on the morning session um and today it took 50 minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day at that point we're at 100 per contract and we took a total of nine trades this, this morning sorry i always get the hiccups when i start talking they go away <laughs> but Okay, on the month now, we're at $2,337. That's over eight days, averaging $292 per day. On the year, we're at $19,888. That's over 142 days, averaging $140 per day. Almost have symmetry there. Almost. And it's going up, which is a good thing, because we've been rocking. Knock on wood this month. Um, if you have not taken a free trial with us, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go here to the home page at CFRN.net. And in the right hand column, it says apply to CFRN.net. If you click on that, you will be brought to this page, which you can go to directly, eminitrainingschool.com. Um, and on this page, just work your way down here. And all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. And you can tell us your biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training just for you. Okay, hit the send button and you'll be sent all the information you need to take the free trial. All right, I'm starting to talk like a southerner. Um, all right, well, let's see. All right, this is gold. Now this morning gold, uh, starting out right here, there was a long opportunity that we missed that would have given a little bit of profit. Then right here, there was a short opportunity that we picked up six ticks on. And another one right here that we missed that would have been a break-even trade. Um, another one right here that we did do that was a break-even trade. And another one right here that we missed that would have been profitable. Okay. Now sliding over over and over um there was nothing else during the break okay on the euro the euro was choppy all morning okay then it finally broke out went up and we took a chance and the long trade set up stopped us out and then it moved up a little bit but it didn't do what it should have done okay and it turned around and came back down so we were minus eight ticks on the euro this morning on one trade. Mm -hmm. On crude oil, let's see. Mm -hmm. On crude, we started out with a break even trade right here on crude. Okay. Then we missed a shorting opportunity here that would have been a break even had we gotten it. Um, we jumped in this one, but I forgot I was even in it. And I was distracted by something else. And we ended up picking up uh, 10 ticks on that. Okay. I mean, I should have I should have been out of it over here somewhere with some profit. But I didn't get out of it until way over here with 10 ticks. Um, we missed this nice short right here. That would have been a good one to get because that gave another 10 ticks at least. Um, there was a break even here, and we picked up 5 ticks on this one. Okay, now during the break, there was a shorting opportunity right here. <clears throat> and change directions. And it changed directions. And there was one long opportunity right here. Well, I guess there was one right there. Another one right there. And that was... That was it for the crew. On the ES, we scroll back. See, price was attracted to this 2900 level this morning. And it's also a weekly trading zone. It makes it kind of dangerous. But dangerous for trading, I mean. Okay. Uh, we started out with one break even right here. Okay, then it went right up to the zone. Came off the zone a little bit, then started consolidating around the zone. 
can cut back into the zone in here and then get up above it. And we didn't have any trade setups in there. Then it was coming back to the zone. And now we have a nice separation right here. And we're coming away from the zone. And we picked up four ticks on it right there. Okay, I'm going to put in a new low right here. Change directions, and this is all during the break now. Um, I had a long opportunity right there. And another one there. And that was it. That was it on the yes. And that was it for our morning session for that matter. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to bring you back here. If you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Right over here in the right-hand column, it says apply.CFRN.net, five-day free trial. That is going to bring you to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. Now, you can go directly to that page if you want to, or you can go through our own homepage and you know, read all the information that we have over here. Um, <clears throat> but on this page, the eminitrainingschool.com page, all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. And you can tell us your biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training specifically for you. Okay. Hit the send button. Okay. Once you hit the send button, you'll be sent all the information that you need to get into the live training room. Okay. All right. And that's it, guys. With that, we can pass it back out to Studio A in fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. I'm right here. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Your chart. I'm sorry? All right. I said I can see your chart. Okay, you got to run. Yeah, because I have that meeting. Okay, nope. coming up. All right, all right. Thanks very so, much. Oh, recap of the recap. Uh, recap of the recap. Today it took fifty minutes and three trades to get to one hundred dollars per contract. Fifty minutes, three trades. One hundred dollars. That's per a, a good bingo. It is. Okay. All right. All right, all right guys, we're gonna take a look at the daily chart here. I haven't, I didn't call John. Is he out there? Let me see. Not yet. No. I'll go ahead and jingle his phone. Let him know we're ready for him if he wants to pop in. And then we'll talk about the daily chart. been officially jingled okay s p 500 e mini futures daily chart we put in a swing low back june 3rd and our most recent swing high on the daily which is also the all-time historic high came july 26th we had a bullish cross right here june 12th at a price of roughly 28.46 yeah now <clears throat> and then we had a bearish cross right here from the swing low down at 27.32 up to the swing high at 30.30 turns out where we had the bullish cross reflects 62% a 62% Fibonacci retracement which we see over here as price was coming down we talked about as we made it through the 38 and through the 50 and we caught nice bounces at each level as we came down to that 62 
we knew it was important because it was a 62% Fibonacci retracement. It's also where the bullish cross happened. Now, think about this for a minute. If, you're, if you don't know a lot about Fibs, if you're not familiar with Fibs, let me just say, uh, you don't have to spend 20 grand to learn Fibs. You don't, you don't need specialized tools. I'm not saying the tools don't work. They do. They absolutely do. Uh, if I take my fibs off right here, and if I go to the swing low and draw it to the swing high, that works. So every platform comes with a set of fib tools. They're not as sophisticated. These other fib tools, they will... Uh, monitor markets in multiple time frames and then start to draw fibs based off of you know what again the tools do exactly what they were created to do so I'm not knocking that at all but I think what we what we do is we get so deep in the swamp we lose sight of what uh, Leonardo Mr. Pisa was trying uh, to show us there there is complicated mathematics and then there's simple elegance now one of these one of these math geniuses who can do square roots in their head to them the complicated what you and I would see as very complicated mathematics they see that as simply elegant I don't I just see something that makes my head hurt. Thank God for calculators, right? So anyway, do I think FIBs are important? Is it, a, is it an important tool to have in your trading tool chest? Yes. Our indicators, in fact, Michael and I both think so fondly of FIBs that when we created our indicator set, they're baked in. Those of you that have been through the training, you've been in the workshops, you've seen us draw you know, chart after chart, and when we get a retracement and price turns up, almost always at a fib, but I don't want to launch into all of that right now because that would take up the whole day. So we get a bearish cross. Now, it, but just before I move on from the fibs, are they important? Yes. So much so we put them in the tools. So if you become a partner or passport holder, you're going to get fibs. You won't even have to mess with the tool because again, it's baked into not only the indicators, but it's baked into the methodology. There's John. All right, let me get his mic open. All right, so when I come back, or when I finish talking with John, we're going to pick back up with the daily chart. I'm going to finish what I was going to say, and then we're going to jump straight to the concierge trade alerts and also the Logic 247 alerts. We had uh, we had a good evening. We were blessed. Now, John called, but I don't see him in here. All right, hang on. I guess I need to call him back. Stand by. I'll be right back. All right, that worked out great. Uh, he's rebooting, and then he'll be joining us. So, 62% Fibonacci retracement, which, now, don't stretch to understand this if you're not at that level yet. But this bullish cross that turned out to be a 62% Fibonacci retracement. Remember, we were watching this area for that reason. Did this project this or is this a reflection of that well, let me be the first to tell you i don't know all right i don't 
I really don't understand how an internal combustion engine works. But I get in my car all the time, go to the store, get a loaf of bread, or loaf bread as we called it growing up, and uh, the proverbial jug of milk and all, you know, I, I don't, what's under the hood, hey, I'm amazed by it, I certainly enjoy using them, but I don't, I just don't have a desire to learn, to, to know any more than that. Whereas, you know, lots of folks eat, sleep, drive cars, and it's, it's a big thing, and that's good. Everyone should have something that they're passionate about. And if you work all the time, you need a hobby, so maybe, maybe it's cars for you. I don't know. Uh, I, now, I love driving cars. All the cars I dreamed about when I was a little boy, mostly the 74 Mercedes 450 SL. That was the car to me as a kid growing up. And, uh, and then I got it, and then I drove it. It was a classic by the time, by the time I was able to get it. Uh, and you know, some classic cars don't cost as much as you might think they would. You should peruse Craigslist sometime. Although, I did take a look the other day. <clears throat> prices there's inflation a little bit all right so so whether this is the chicken or the egg doesn't matter we're gonna eat price pulls back where to the BBC price always reverts to the mean so if you've spent time in the live training room in the morning whether you've been on a trial or you're already a member of the family you know that much of the session is just simply sitting, waiting for what? Price to pull back. But that's on a range chart, right? What we do is fluid across all markets, all time frames. So the way it unfolds on that four tick range chart, it's gonna unfold in a similar manner. I don't mean a carbon copy, but I mean the principle under which it operates, 30 minute, daily markets are fractal in nature if you google that google can probably explain it better than i could so what do we look for from here if at the 62 we call it a bounce up to the bbc which we anticipate to be good resistance till it isn't what we're seeing a continuation of this leg do I think that we'll see this 62% Fibonacci retracement on this move? Let me clarify. I don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody does. And anybody that tells you they do, maybe they don't even understand that they don't. It's just not how the world was created. But anyway, the high probability move based upon our methodology, our narrative, the way we see and think about markets is a continuation down at least to the 62. Now, if I grab my other fib tool, and if I go to this swing high, and I drag it down to that swing low right there, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag it up to the retracement swing high. Now, because this is a down move, I'm doing things what probably looks like in reverse, and I am. This is reverse fibs and reverse Fibonacci projections. We were looking at, or before we were looking at just the regular fibs. I'm going to show you the reverse fibs in a minute, but I want to show you this projection tool. <clears throat> I've explained how to use it before on the show, and of course, anyone who's a partner or passport holder, uh, you can always learn how to use it, just ask. So what this does, based on Fibonacci's math, the same math that gives us the 62% retracement, it projects targets into the future. Okay. Now, if we were to get a what's called a measured move, that means the distance between this high and this low, if that repeats itself, and it often does, it's, it's a thing, right? Where would that put us? Right here, 2677. 
I'm not saying that's going to happen. No, but it's certainly one of the things that could happen. So much so that we have a tool that can show us that it might happen and what it will look like and what numbers we could anticipate. Now, this is a 100% price extension. See, we're extending price from here to here based on the size of this leg. So all we're looking for is a duplication of the leg. Okay? So when you hear that term in the future, if someone else is talking about trading and you hear measured move, just duplicating the leg. Okay? All right. Now, a 62% extension takes us almost to the tick, this swing low. So for me, that ups the X factor. That price, because see, not only, not only is this going to serve as potentially good support, right? Just like it did here. Maybe we spike it just a little bit. It's not only good support, it's an opportunity to pull back to the BBC again and get another duplication. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So as we come down into this 62 area, we find good support. We'll look for price to go back to the BBC and continue until it doesn't. It's a leg and a retracement and a leg. Now, this is a daily chart. So on the four tick range in the morning, you see, you see leg after leg after leg after, and that's why we use the four tick range chart. If we were using a larger time frame, a 30 minute or an hourly, we're only in there for two hours. So on a larger time frame, you might see one trade execution a day. But no matter what time frame you're on, the principle is the same. So we teach you on a model where you're able to see boom, 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 execution after execution, leg after leg. Everything that can happen in the markets plays out over and over and over and over every morning. Repetition. Boring. I know it's not boring yet, but trust me, it will get boring. And that's okay. Boring's good. If you need excitement in your life, you can always you know, go jump out of an airplane. Uh, I have a friend that goes out to Falcon Field every Saturday. He jumps out of a perfectly good airplane. I think it costs him a hundred bucks. Now he's you know certified and been through the classes and stuff, but he was a paratrooper in the Marine Corps, and, and that's how he gets his jollies. He knows not to get it on the trading platform, and hopefully you'll learn that too. Okay. Let's move right along here. So we know what's happening on the daily. We think, we think the high probability thing for the market to do next is to move lower and potentially visit that area and then this area. When we hit this area here for the second time, that might be where we catch our bounce back up to the BBC and then continuation of the move. All right. All right. I have I have statistics for we're only one day into the new week. And Valerie just uh, figured these out for me. Nine actionable trades. Let me see. Let me just bring them up. Let's take a look. So the first one, three weeks in a row, this is crazy, three weeks in a row, first alert, ES, stopped out. It's one of those weird things, right? And don't let those kind of things ever get inside your head, like I, like I may have done, right? Three weeks in a row. It happens. There'll be days you get stopped out three times in a row. You're not broken. Neither is your methodology or your indicators or the market. There is an unequal distribution. 
Some would say it's equal, unequal. Is a distribution of profitable and non-profitable trades. Just like flipping a coin, right? There's a 50% chance you're gonna get heads or tails every time you flip it. But is it possible to get heads three times in a row? Sure. Tails, yes. Is the coin broken? No. Is the flipper broken? No. It's just the truth about coin flipping. All right. Then we had uh, Dow. Okay, so X column. Here we got we have one. And then we had a Dow. And then in Q, long, long, long. Then we had a Russell. Uh, the Russell just couldn't seem to get up and and run with the rest of the pack last night. So that's what the Z's represent, no trigger. And then we've got copper, and then we've got gold. So copper and gold. And then silver. And then gold again. And if we have time, I'll, 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 the reason there's two alerts this close together and why one of them says 2516 is still valid. I was originally looking at 1504 to 1503, but the way the market moved, it, began, it became equitable uh, to go 1506 to 1505, trail of possible, which took you right into the, to the 04 to the 03. So... There you go. And what else? Uh, another S and P. Another S and P. And then a down. And then a crude. I'm writing these down in case you're wondering why I'm so slow. And then there's a gold. Another gold. Long this time. That's two-sided action. Okay? Right. That's what we call it anyway. I got that from Mike Reed. Mike Reed, if you're out there listening in, call me, brother. Uh, so this was short. This was short. From 1506 down to 1503 and trail. But then... There's that. And then the next one was short on the S&P and short on the Dow. Okay, the rest I'm gonna assume haven't triggered. Now we'll take a look at the concierge. I wanted to add those up, see where we stand for the week so far. Let's see. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen found their target, and was it just one that got stopped out? Let me scroll through there again. Yep, number twenty-five, eleven, the first one. Okay. So, quick math, not in my head. It's Monday. Oh, my calculator broken. A broken calculator. Alexa, divide one by 14. One divided by fourteen is zero point zero seven one four. Okay. So. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Well, you just just hang on to it for me, okay? She's not sure about that. All right. Thanks, Alexa. <coughs> so I guess seven percent, whatever, <clears throat> stopped out. It's early in the week. It's just one. So. <clears throat> 
Uh, but it's always nice to start the week off on a positive note. Uh, the concierge trade alerts. Now, what I just what we were just looking at, those are the logic alerts based on current price behavior, dynamic real time in the moment. All right. These and you can take a screenshot if you want to. It's the same eight markets every night for years. And honestly, I don't know how many traders we have trading bonds or even soybeans. If there's even one bond trader, I don't want to take it away. And if there's even one soybean trader, I don't want to take it away. Uh, now, let's just, you know what? Those eight have worked real good uh, for, for some time. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay, to get a screenshot, all right. Consider being short at or below 29.14. And that came out at 6.15 Eastern last night. Okay, so 29.14 should be right about here. And the initial swing low, twenty eight ninety three, twenty ninety three. So that's going to be twenty one S and P points. 21 points available at $50 a point that's uh, it's a thousand dollars per contract traded now let's see if there's an exit signal involved Exit moves will only show up. It's only something that you can put to use on an extended move. And of course, question, well, what's an extended move? Well, for the S&P, the average swing, and this is something we teach, three to five points. So once you exceed five points, the door is now open for this to become an extended move. The exit signal, as I just explained it to you earlier, on that crude alert New visitor. see how the step line now on the crude we were blue and climbing here we're red and falling step lines on the left side of that CF MA1 indicator it crosses over just like it did on the crude it crosses over now the crude we were looking for the first red candle that closed below the step line so on a short we're looking for the first green candle that closes above the step line and so this closed at 29.02 exit signal So that knocks it down to 12 points. Now, that's the difference between, let's see. Should have did my math right. Swing low here was, oh, maybe I, Here, let's just get rid of that. I don't have to. I don't have to recalculate it. All right, from the entry to the exit signal, the close of that candle, which was twenty nine oh two. Exit signal twenty nine oh two. Twelve points available. Hold on, hold on for me just one second, guys.
All right, I'm back. Oh, this was from uh, Friday. I'm guessing. No, we won't worry about it now. We'll focus on today. All right. <clears throat> so 12 points available, $50 a point, $600 per contract traded from the entry to the exit signal. Okay. Now, let me look real quick here on the S&P. Where was that short on the S&P? Is that the only one? Uh, yeah, the others were long early on in the session. Okay. So, twenty. Did we get that pull back to twenty nine oh six this morning? I don't think we did. Still now it came short. I think it was by two ticks. Oh, here's a here's a swing high at. Oh, what time did that? I don't. What time did that come out? That's. Let's see, on a pullback, uh, so that came out at 9.11 Eastern. So that would be this candle right here. Okay, and so we were looking for a pullback uh, to 29, or pullback to 29.09. Okay, yeah, that's where we came short. I thought we had to pull to 06. So swing high was... 29.08 and a quarter. Oh, we missed it by three ticks. So, let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. Right here. Okay. Now, that's showing Pacific time because Telegram reads your computer's clock. So, whatever time zone you're in, whatever time zone your computer is set to, that's what's going to show up in your Telegram. My charts are on Eastern. So if you look at the same, if you have Telegram, you look at this exact same thing. Time showing is going to be whatever time zone you're in. Okay. So we wanted to come back to that, pull back to 29.09 and then get short 06 to 04. It didn't give us that. And so we took an entry at 28.92. So we missed that by three ticks. Uh, that's, what do they call that? A bummer? Yeah. 19, 20 point move. Oh, well, 2892 was there and took us down to 2890. So there. Now, you should think of the concierge trade alert as a line in the sand. The alert came, the concierge alerts came out last night uh, during this candle right here. Okay. Now, the long side here, let me pull that back up <clears throat> you put two draw two lines in the sand let's draw the other line go back so the long side 29.45 now we never went there and that's okay. That's the thing I want you to understand <clears throat> with the concierge trade alerts. It's not. It's not a price prediction. It's not a not a forecast. It is what I'm trying to explain right here is a line in the sand. Okay, twenty nine forty five. So when the static report comes in every night, I recommend putting the lines on your chart. When price gets below 29.14, I only want to be looking for short trade setups. Leg, a retracement to the BBC, leg. That's it right there in a nutshell. It's what you see in the live training room every morning. Trade after trade after trade after trade. 
and 2,000 and however many alerts we're into with logic, that's you know basically the same thing. All right, so <clears throat> you've got 29.45 up here. If price gets above 29.45, now the numbers are good for the entire session. So if price were to miraculously turn around, I'm not going to be interested in trading the market long in here. I'm not interested in trading it short in here either. Because in here is the market trying to make up its mind what it wants to do, what direction it's going to go in. And when it decides we want to climb aboard and we wanted to participate in this move right here, but we were dependent upon the pullback and we missed it by three ticks. But the other one, uh, the other one, we walked right into that one. So beautiful thing. And that one's about ready to trigger again, I think. All right. So that's it for the S&P. Oh, by the way, these are last week's weekly trading zones. I update them for the audience at large, the community, every Thursday. But partners and passport holders get their zones every Monday morning. 6.15 a.m. Eastern. So they can get them on the charts and be ready before Wall Street wakes up. <clears throat> okay. I was just going to point out, we talked a lot last week about prices always trying to get to a weekly zone. As you can see, evidenced here. Pull back to the BBC, boom, up again. And right here we get a bearish cross. Prices now trying to get to the zone below. And that's a move, you know, depends on where you measure from, 2920 down to 2900, a 20 point move. When price is above the BBC, I consider it attempting to get to that zone overhead. And when it's below, I gotta believe it's trying to get to the zone below. So if I'm long here and I'm short here, long here and short here and long here and short here. Now, price started trying to get to that zone below way back up here on this gap lower open here. Price never rarely can travel in a straight line. Now, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Uh, the market does everything but a straight line. So from when it originally said, I'm gonna to try to get to the zone below to here, is it still on that same mission? Yep. Did it zig back and zigzag back and forth? It did. Is, is that how markets work? It is. And can anyone predict with absolute certainty what the next tick or the next candle is going to do? Absolutely not. What you can know and what we teach you how to know is what the next high probability move is. All right, so we'll go to the Dow. Concierge trade alert last night for the Dow. So they're being short at or below 26180. When price isn't able to pull all the way back to test the trigger, like here, 26180. Here we got real close, 26168. And the trigger is 26180. And so from 180, 26180, from 180, we dropped to last week's zone. Bounced. We expect it to be good support until it isn't. It was. Bounced once, bounced twice. Now we're consolidating. Only three things can happen at a weekly trading zone. When price runs into a weekly zone, 
the most likely thing is this consolidation at the zone. Second most likely is rejection. Both of these price touched the zone and it was instantly rejected. Now consolidation. After consolidation, price will either launch a journey attempting to get to the zone overhead or the zone below. When you're able to discern which zone price is trying to get to, I hope you see the simplicity, the simple elegance there. You just got to hitch a ride. It's the 60s. You got long hair. You're on the Ventura Highway. You got your thumb out. Hey, brother, can you spare a ride? Remember back in the day, people actually picked up hitchhikers? I think anyone would <clears throat> think of that. Only a sicko would pick somebody up these days. Don't hitchhike, kids. <coughs> it's not safe. <clears throat> The long line in the sand for the Dow, 26345. And this is the open last night. So we never got there last night. Oh, what was the swing high? Oh, we did. We did. 26345. We went a couple ticks over the line. That's two, six, three, four, 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 five. Yep. So that was the line. Does that happen? Apparently it did. Yeah. Stuck her head up, looked around. Price obviously didn't like what it saw when it stuck its head up through there. And so the rest is a tail of the tape. So from 180. Basically, it's 180 points. If it were 200 points at $5 a point, that would be $1,000 per contract traded. Was there an exit signal here? Let's look. The exit signal right there. Closing price, 26114. So 80 minus 14. 66. So that would be 66 points from the entry to the exit signal. 66 points times $5 per point. 300 bucks. All right, let's move on. Next, 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 Russell. Bearish cross, leg, retrace, right to the BBC and the weekly trading zone. Doesn't get much better than that. The Russell. Okay, lines in the sand last night. Short at or below 1503. three and then the long side of the story 1523 so we tripped it pull back to the BBC triggered again dropped from 1503 down to 1496 and, we, and then we got back above the trigger right there important prices important areas almost always tested and then here we go okay in Q again these are last week's zones but this is the carryover effect of the zones that I'm always talking about The 
They probably made a good move or found those areas useful last week. No reason not to find them accommodating here just a couple days later. That's why I always encourage you on Thursday when I put out the new zones for the entire community, jot them down. Good chance they'll come in handy on the Globex Open and into the beginning of the new week. All right, in queue, short side, 76.45. And the long side, 77.05. There's another one where Price stuck its head up above. Look left, look right. Didn't like what it saw, and so retreated. And then we're off to the races on the downside. So from 76, 53, down to 76, 03. Well, that's 50 points at $20 per point. That's what the NQ pays. So this move right here is $1,000 per contract. down to just this area right here, 76.03, right in here. And then it's got a uh, pretty choppy technical term. Okay, uh, crude. Last night, if you didn't get a screenshot before here, you can grab another one. Crude, long at or above 54.70. Fifty-four seventy. We ran up to thirty, forty, about four hundred and fifty dollars per contract. That's how far the market moved. Now the alerts came out back here. Short side for crude fifty-three seventy. Put in a swing low at 53, 54. 53, 54. There's 53, 70. That's crude. Uh, let's do gold. And there's no zone showing from last week because we traded way above the highest weekly trading zone last week on gold. The highest last week was 1500 slash 1501. And as you can see, we're at 1517. So alerts came out last night right here. The long side, 1515. And we ran up to 15 19 90. So that's about a $500 per contract move. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. Back below the trigger. Up we go again. And this time the swing high is about 15 18 About $300. So a $500 per contract move. Back below the trigger. $300 move. Prior to that, <clears throat> on the short side, fourteen ninety nine. Did we get there? Looks like we stuck our head out. That's the uh, swing low right there. <clears throat> fourteen ninety eight sixty. Sure did. And the number was fourteen ninety nine. Just as on the other charts, it stuck its head up. Didn't see what it liked. Same thing here, but in reverse. 
So one more time. The concierge, that's what I just drew the line for on the chart. Those are based on prior price behavior. The logic 247 is current price behavior. When you bring those two things together and wrap them in or frame them in weekly trading zones and then pinpoint the direction and the entry that offers the highest probability with the least amount of risk. Again and again, over and over, time after time. It's not magic. It's not voodoo. No crystal balls involved. Nothing mystical. It's all very logical. And I realize if you're new to trading, it certainly, it seems anything but logical at the moment. Right? I agree. If you spend a little time around us, you won't see us using a lot of fancy tools or big words. What we do is very simple, but it's simple by design. We used to have the, the fancy tools, and I don't know if we ever used the big words or not, but what we found is that having multiple indicators and oscillators, and of course, you know, just like anyone else, we were on the hunt for that because we knew that there just there had to be that this one thing, this this wonder. Because we had, I mean, what we had going on was awesome, except it wasn't profitable. But we knew that we were just like one mouse click away from greatness. And if we could just find that one indicator, and we coded a bunch ourselves because we thought, man, you know, nobody else has made it, so we'll make it. And you know what? It's like looking for a black hat in the dark that isn't even there. You can't find what's not there. And that thing, that thing that makes every trade profitable, does it exist? You can spend all of your time and all of your treasure looking, and I promise you, you won't find it. What you can find, and what we hope you'll find, is the ability to know what the next high probability move in the markets is. You should be able to look at any chart any time frame and instinctively see what the next high probability move is. If you can't, if you don't have that ability, if you would like to learn more, if you haven't taken our trial, take our trial, book a mentoring session one-on-one -on -one with myself, Michael, both of us will be happy to spend a little time with you. There's too many alarms going off. Big time. All right, let me see if John's going to come on or not. Hang on just one second. I'll be right back. All right, John is coming. He'll be right here. In the meantime, I'll show you this. Kind of cute. If you want to take our trial, go to eminitrainingschool.com. That's the CFRN, eMini Training School. And then this guy will help you take the trial. I'm serious. Watch this. Hi, trader. Welcome to CFRN. I'll help you set up your free trial. I'm going to email you a link and a password to get things started. So you just click hi, hi, very friendly. What's your name? <laughs> you see, you see what she did? She said, nice to meet you, Dwayne.
Is that not clever? That's ever so clever. Yep. Boys are their toys. <clears throat> okay. All right. So John's on his way. He's not here. There he is. All right. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Hi there. Sorry uh, for coming out a bit late today. No, that's, that's all right. I'm sorry you had uh, computer problems. What happened? It just blow up on you? Oh, man. Uh, you know, when something goes wrong uh, in my office and uh, it's 44 screens, it's, uh, and a few of them go out, it's really hard to get them back on. And it's uh, finally just uh, managed to get it done. So, And oh, I can't man. I can't bring the machines back up until all the screens are, are good because uh, all the settings and everything go to go to heck, you know, and it's uh, very tough to, to get it all right. You know, there's uh, years, decades of work involved. <laughs> so, wow. But uh, do you the, manage, the do you manage goal, all that? Uh, do, you, do you manage all of that yourself? The connections? I do. Thing? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not as geek. I'm not as geeky as you. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I you know, I got my hands full with whatever, however many screens I've got going here. Forty four. I can't even imagine. Yeah, there's a lot. But anyway, um, that's why I'm able to kind of you know, talk about things just as if I'm, they're in my head because, uh, I, you know, after a while, it's kind of like a library, you know where to, you know where to find the book, yeah, you know, right. and, and that's, right. so, um, the, it's quite a big day in the markets today, you know, this, the, the, we talked about this uh, potential weekly reversal last week, but it has a kind of a bad omen to it, 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 it did turn out to be a kind of a hanging, hanging man, uh, doji type thing and uh, I mean even though look I mean look uh, if we turn up from here we're probably going to be okay and this could be a sort of a, a bit of a retest but the fact that we were not able to to follow through uh, to the upside uh, we tried to do it last night I had a feeling it was going to turn down and it did and uh, you know the VIX is uh, on, on another march higher today which just went through 20 looks pretty strong actually and uh it kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's a bit dangerous now because having gone back through 20 after being, a, listen, this thing was down to about 13 a, a week or two ago and, um, you know, around about the July 25th highs and now we're 20, that's that's quite a big increase in the TBIX and uh, it, it, it could go to, you know, we, we look, if, if we go down uh, you know, if we break down and reverse this rever this uh, attempt at a reversal last week, uh, it could be, uh, it could be, uh, could you put the TVIX up there? Sure, turn? you bet. The TV, TV, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was a, that was a five minute chart. What do you, what, what time do you want it set on? Uh, probably 30 minutes, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you see, it's a different picture. Uh, it's uh, pretty strong today. And uh, it, it, it is a little bit dangerous because you've got an upside, actually you've got a possible island bottom there, those two days. So if we go higher in the next couple of days, that would be very, very bad news. Uh, you know, because it, it, it implies that we should go to 25 to 30 on the TBIX. And that, that'll mean a fairly bad breakdown in the markets. And, and look, I'm just looking at the, <clears throat> the emerging markets has gone to a new low today. It's reversed this doji attempt last week. So this, it's really grim for the Chinese markets and uh, and the emerging markets as well. And the dollar is not quitting just yet. Uh, you know, look, if the dollar breaks, everything could change. But uh, right now, I, you know, especially being a Monday, and, and look, if we don't reverse tomorrow, usually, you know, the Tuesday, Tuesday turnaround, if we have a negative Tuesday, that that would be even worse. Uh, so, um, and even our friends, the the, the the LABU, you know, it's breaking down again. So it, the the situation is uh, very bad um, today. And uh, it uh, just let me just pull up the the daily on this Nasdaq, see what it looks like. Yeah, you know, it's it's not, look, it's not it's not not the end of the world just yet. You know. We, we you're looking at now, to, John, the, uh, the NASDAQ? The, the NASDAQ futures, yeah. How, but, you know, if we if we do break down and we take out last week's low, that would, that would, be, uh, that would be pretty bad. 
uh, and would tend to suggest that we're going to have some some trouble in the next couple of months. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but as as we are at the moment, I wouldn't I wouldn't describe this this correction as particularly uh, troublesome. I mean, we're down a couple of hundred on the Dow. It's not uh, it's not too too serious just yet. But it, you know, you can see you know you look at the VIX, see what that looks like. The gold and the silver just won't quit. We're uh, comfortably above seventeen now on the silver uh, after a bit of a test in the last couple of days back to 1517 on the gold we're closing in on uh, on a new high a uh, new six month or six year high for the gold so uh it uh, it, it it you know and the next move could be quite quite uh, dramatic uh, certainly up to 1550 and possibly even 1650 1700 in, in a fairly short period of time so um daily chart on silver does look it, it looks very bullish and, and uh, look you know when you think about it if you think about where we are today i think i haven't done it yet to go back and look at the charts back in um you could probably do it on yours better than me because I'm, I'm not sure if i even have the history going back but if you go back to the last time we were at 1500 uh, on the gold and look to where the silver was at the same time I think you'll probably find that we were about $25 or something like that. You know, we were probably quite considerably higher uh, than where we are today. Um, so uh, the, that, that, that could mean, you know, other people may be looking at that and saying, you know, the silver is $10 under value. So, uh, you know, that, that, could, that could really push the silver back up. And obviously, if we go to... 1900 1950 and hitting you all time on high on gold people are going to be saying well the last time we were here silver's at 50 bucks so you know we certainly could go to about 36 you know back to 36 very very quickly you know uh, and almost uh, you know super dramatically uh, so um, and we're literally only 400 dollars away in gold from potentially being at, at a place where silver was at fifty dollars the last time that happened think about that i mean it's it's pretty powerful is this, when is you, this what you were you, looking for john yeah 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 uh gold uh, so when we were at 15 uh, 2013 so let's look at uh, mid 2013 say let's check what the or the first quarter of 20, 2013 let's have a look at where where the silver price was then oh is it is it we at 1600 on the thing right now okay check yeah check check the first quarter of of, of, of 2013 in silver to see where the price was okay 2013. <clears throat> this thing's down to a daily Uh, on silver, on silver. Oh, on silver. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. It, it was over twenty. It was over twenty. Was so uh, twenty thirteen. It was thirty. Surely, Michael Jeepers Christ! Look at that. It was over 30 for most of the 20, well, for the first quarter of 2013. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're at the same price today, uh, you know, in gold to where silver was $30 the last time we were at this price. So, it took a long time for silver to give it, give it all up. <clears throat> it really did. Yeah. I mean, remember, we got back to 21 a while back in uh, 2016. So, you know, that I'd say we're on our way to 21 pretty quick on the silver. Uh, so. That'd be very nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't sort of say too much, uh, you know, about Santa Fe uh, at this point, but because uh, all I can say is I've had a few upside surprises that, 
you know, I wasn't expecting that, uh, you know, or either people know about or they can find out about uh, the, the, you know, including the fact that production is getting very close now, basis the last, um, the last uh, announcements. But this morning, uh, somebody told me to go and look at mining.com. Can you go to mining.com? Sure. Obviously, this is a pretty good uh, uh, link for uh, mining stocks. Okay, if you go to see USA in the in the menu there underneath intelligence, just mm -hmm. click on that, okay. and then go down a bit, a bit more. See latest news there, uh, latest stories, top ten mm -hmm. mid-tier and precious metal miners. Click on that. Okay, just scroll down, number one, scroll down to number nine. Argonaut, Gold Resource, Gold Reserve, Vista, Fjord, Sand Spring, There's Santa Fe. How about that? <coughs> That's great. <laughs> That's nice. And not, a, not a bad uh, accomplishment to ascend to the top 10 junior miners in the US or in mid-tier in junior miners. Mm -hmm. So uh, now the now the objective is to to go up that list over the next year or so. Hopefully get to one number one one day, maybe. But uh, ah, uh, we'll see. Yep. We're on so, way. That's good news, Josh. It's nice to it, see that. It, it sure is, it sure is. So, uh, the, um, uh, the, the stocks are definitely looking vulnerable. You know, Amazon, Google, all these stocks have turned uh, somewhat negative. And uh, the bonds are heading back towards highs. The all-time high in the bonds is about 172. Back in 2016, we're, we're 10, 10 points away from an all-time high in the bonds. Uh, the oh um, the the uh, can you put up the the, the yin y i n n y i n n yeah daily yeah see what I mean about the Chinese market there it looks pretty grim well that does look uh, uh, that looks pretty grim. yeah it does. It, yeah, and put put the uh, F, FXI is another another version of that. So, what do you think about that Epstein business uh, so, this weekend? Uh, just unbelievable. Well, you know, I was thinking of you actually <laughs> because of that thing that Trump retweeted last night. Did you hear about it? Oh, about the body count with the Clintons. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, it's I, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it had four, eight million views, all that stuff, apparently. Four million, the, those three links got about four million views apiece. Uh, so it's kind of a big story. And uh, anybody who didn't know about the Clinton body count before sort of can make their own mind up and now. Did you see that report by the, supposedly by the CDC? I'm pretty skeptical of that one, but I haven't had a chance to. CDC. Where, where it go? CDC. Body count. Uh, boy, I think this is well. This is this is the post. That doesn't mean it's it's true. I'm just seeing it's. Uh, well, you okay. know about this. Uh, See, here's the part. That's uh, uh, okay. This one, I guess, doesn't mention the CDC. President Trump joined in as well, retreating a conservative personality who captioned a video. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just saw the stuff about Seth Rich as well. Uh, I wish we could get the truth on that. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you know, all this stuff about hurling this abuse of Trump, I think it's going to backfire, uh, you know, because there's so much, you know, after a while, 
it sounds bad when it first happens, but after a while, it just gets. I think it just shrug, it gets shrugged off, and it, and people get numb to it. You know, they get they get used to it, and uh, it doesn't resonate anymore. So, uh, I think that um, um, the, the thing that kind of surprised me over the weekend is that uh, Scaramucci, you know, has sort of turned dog on Trump. That was probably a mistake. He, he's a little bit uh, vociferous uh, when he comes on, you know, a little bit holier than thou, you know, criticizing Trump's tweets. And, and he, he's got a point because, you know, we've talked about this on the show. How many times has Trump been at 50, 51, 52 popularity? And almost every time he does something that, that causes his numbers to go back down. You know, there's something, something happens that causes that. It's right. kind of unfortunate. But one of these days, you know, I think he will break out. Uh, and he may surprise everybody. You never know in the, in the last year, you know, before the election, <clears throat> maybe he'll really work at, uh, you know, being a different kind of a, uh, maybe he'll tone it down. And, and uh, you know, it's almost like bad cop for the first three, year, three years good cop for the last year it could it could have a very profound effect actually i mean look there's, there's a lot of commentary about people who are coming over to trump all the time i'm certainly seeing seeing it on twitter because the the, the trump movement is is growing every day uh, it's 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 amazing actually how much it's growing and <clears throat> you know new people are coming on and there's a kind of a community in in that that that's very uh um, welcoming and uh, is sort of a you know uh, kind of like a family almost. It's a, it's a movement, you know. It's a movement like there's never been before. Right. And uh, it's it's a monster development, you know. And then you've got uh, this guy, you know, his campaign manager, who's very shrewd. And I wouldn't be surprised if Trump can, you know. I mean, it's they got 63 million voters last time. I mean, they honestly could get 100 million voters. It could, it could happen, you know. They're talking about the Hispanics uh, could go 50% for Trump, <clears throat> and the, the blacks, you know, could they're, they're, you know, arguably they're somewhere between 22 and 30, 32%. Um, and uh, the the walkaway movement is a, is a huge and growing. And then there's the military and all the, you know. And then there's all the people that, that got a job, you know, the new six million new jobs. It's a pretty powerful story. And the, you know, obviously there's a little bit of a risk now of this market uh, coming on, you know, getting into trouble in the next few months. But I think people are smart enough to, to know that uh, he's kind of told us the China story pretty well. It's getting very good reporting. Um, and uh, I got to tell you, uh, yesterday, I haven't even finished watching it yet, but that Sunday Morning Futures program did an interview with Steve Bannon. Uh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, the um, It was an excellent interview. This guy's really smart. Uh, and uh, he's um, got a very good grip. You know, if you want to get a global perspective on things, uh, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy is, is uh, I know that's my own handle on Twitter, but <laughs> he's Mr. Global Perspective person, you know, number one for sure. And uh, another one the other night uh, or a week ago and on Saturday night, uh, Mark Levin did an interview with I, Niall I saw, Ferguson. I saw his, uh, I saw that. With Niall Ferguson? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah, it was good. I mean, this guy, listen, this guy used to be a kind of a never Trumper and he's all in now for Trump, you know, uh, so uh, it's just another convert and very, very smart guy. And, uh, you know, this guy really understands what's going on in the world. And then I think you take people like Kyle Bass, who has been talking about Asia in the last week in, in very, and by the way, there's, you know, listen, there's, there's a, allegedly uh, a rumor that allegedly uh, HSBC could be in trouble. Um, so you've got Deutsche Bank. Uh, actually, you might have put up Deutsche Bank. Uh, let's take a look at it and see how, how it looks. A billion is a lot of money, <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, and there's 20 more banks like that. Look at look at today. Look at that thing today. Jesus Christ, that's, that thing's about to hit new lows. Yeah, it does not look good. Uh, I mean, 
this is one of the biggest banks in the world and it's going it's really in big trouble uh, it's kind of like uh, lehman brothers all over again and um that's what they're calling it you know the european kind of lehman uh try let's have a look at hb h i think it's hbc i'm not sure if that, that's the symbol for hb bsc What is it you're looking for now? HB, HBSC. I'm not sure what the symbol is for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting it under that. H, try HBC. No, I'll get it for you on Yahoo. Hang on a second. Saudi Arabia is cutting back on production again, so we should see a bump in oil prices this week. Yeah, I, I think that's going to come. Like we were talking about last week, you know, maybe there's a plan to uh, to boost, you know, to, to 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 boost the price because it's it's starting to get a little bit tough for some of these oil producers. Oh, it says HSBC is a symbol. Hmm. HSBC. It's it's not it's not in too in too much trouble. I think. I mean, it's not going anywhere. That's for sure. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so that is it. Hmm. I mean, it's turning down, obviously, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly is. You think all the banks are going to get hit? Uh, could could be uh, you know this Deutsche Bank could drag them down and because uh, you know they're all interconnected and there's always a chance of a sort of a domino type thing, right? So uh, you know um, it's probably a, <clears throat> it could be a low risk short you know but uh, as we've been speaking the the VIX is the, the market's turning down even for let's have a look at the SM you were I mean your, your specialty there is the S&P so here we go yep yeah that's last week's really zone right there at 8081 uh, we're basically at uh, zone for this week uh, yeah. right there right now let's give it to yeah. the audience 8485 so we're at 86 right here so I would I would hold off on going short right here guys because you're going to run into uh, potentially some very good support here. You've got this week's zone, you got last week's zone. So I would wait to see if it can get through this area and hold it on a pullback. Because if we're going to turn up, this is this is, this is a perfect spot right in here for this thing to find. I'm not saying it will, it's not a forecast. But can you uh, get down squeeze, here. It up, squeeze it up a bit? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bad looking development. The the way we, you know, how we went along the top there. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, maybe what does a daily look like? Oh no, we just looked at that. How about the three hour chart? That might be better. Sure. You see that you see that sort of distribution uh, up around the 2940 and then if you squeeze that up and see what it kind of looks like a, a rebound off the first hit you know what I mean mm -hmm. and actually that is a quite kind of a very dangerous uh, kind of a setup you know um, from the swing it, high it, to the most recent swing low <clears throat> we hit a 62 percent Feb retracement exactly right exactly and exactly so as i said <laughs> earlier on it's not you know if it were to turn up from here that would be a a good development you know that would be encouraging uh so you know we just have to see if that's going to happen but right now it, it, it appears to be turning down into the afternoon and there is the risk of the vix uh you know potentially gapping up tomorrow 
because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of good news, you know, around to uh, to to turn the markets higher at the moment. No, doesn't. Anything else you want to cover, John? Uh, uh, there was something uh, something about the real estate, but I can't think of it now. Uh, the lumber is heading back down again. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, NVR. Um, <coughs> Uh, that that actually I was looking at that yesterday I'll have a few a bit more to say about this in a few days time this stock uh, it's an amazing stock this uh, is one of the top performing stocks of all time but uh, if, you can, do do? if you if you can squeeze it back to uh, you know like two decades uh, you see how it ha had a big break back in 2018 when the real estate problem started right Okay, and it came came back up, back a lot, but it's the fact that it's gone back up, I th I think this is a pretty good bellwether for the real estate uh, market, and um, obviously is this a real estate trust. Is that what this is? is uh, this uh, they're a specialist real realtor, okay. real real estate company build builder, you know. Uh, oh, they're so builder. Like, okay, yeah. So uh, it's uh, the fact. I mean, it kind of looks like it's going to go to a new high, which I I would think is you know with the I think the interest rates falling now is helping this this uh, stock go higher so uh, I think it's it's kind of boding well for real estate because look you know since Trump got in the White House uh, you know he's lost quite you know because they value his buildings he's lost uh, he's lost um, quite a bit of supposedly half a billion to a billion dollars in net worth since he became president maybe maybe that's uh, that might be picking up right now remember they they reported this about a year ago right so if you look at nvr and you look at where they sort of were talking about trump actually i think there was the last forbes that came out if you remember it was a you know around september october so his net worth actually probably went up quite a bit uh, in the last year and uh, by the way did you hear bernie sanders call him an idiot <laughs> <You know? laughs> no no i missed that uh forget what it was about but uh you know between calling him a racist and white supremacist and everything else i was just thinking to myself you know if an idiot can make uh, 434 million dollars in 2018 sign me up as an apprentice <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know? mm. uh, because i mean that's what they that's what they don't get about trump is uh, he's got a pretty hefty uh, annual income off all of his properties now and uh, that's actually very considerable um you know bring bringing in that kind of money every year is, is pretty huge you know frankly and uh, uh, you know he, he obviously runs his operations very well to be bringing in net returns of that magnitude so they, they've got this guy i mean it's just you know he's a victim of the tall poppy syndrome and they're just kind of trying to cut him down in any way they can and and uh trying to get him out of office you know like that's the other thing that was you know these the um i think that the uh the witch hunt and the hoax the russian hoax and all that sort of thing i think this is going to be like a it's going to backfire and instead of the watergate you know like getting the president it's going to get the the other side you know it's going to put them out of business what do you think of that idea i i think you're onto something yeah it's and i've said that for a lot i mean how long ago did i say this thing what thing was rotten to the core uh that, that was you know back in a couple of years ago we said that maybe more and it's really turning out to be more than rotten to the core it's just beyond disgusting the whole thing yeah i agree 100 percent. yeah so listen thanks very much have a great afternoon hey our and, uh, our farmer ryan uh he just sent me a, a telegram corn limit down yeah i saw it I, I, thanks for reminding me i meant to mention that and the soy meal is breaking down as well which is a very bad sign <clears throat> so uh, what, any reason for the corn being limited down he didn't say uh, he said yeah. he's still bullish but oh. yeah 
Uh, well, I mean, that's, he's a farmer, so I should pay attention to that. Exactly. Um, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. yeah so look, look for uh, look for some sort of a reversal at some point. I wouldn't be jumping in just yet, but uh, you know, uh, let's see what happens in the next few days. And uh, uh, oh, it's the twelfth today, isn't it? Is it the twelfth today? Today's the twelfth. Is the ag report today? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what did it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, so what do soybeans look like right now? There it is. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's the beans, right? That's the so, beans, right? Yeah, yeah. The beans don't look too bad, but the corn bean uh, down is pretty bad, and. Uh, the wheat also is down, excuse me, pretty substantially, so. Corn futures. Oh, look at that. Hmm. I think it hasn't been limited down in a while. Interesting. Yeah, the wheat is uh, down. Oh, the wheat is virtually limited down as well. It's down about 32. So that's a pretty big deal. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. yeah. I'll have to take a closer look at these tonight. And see, maybe uh, out of this, out of this ashes might rise something nice. So I'm going to look yeah, at you know, the corn and the wheat are well off. Well, not well off the lows. They're off their lows. Um, to the point that, you know, if we had another date on and then it started to turn up, you could you could say that maybe the worst is over. But you know, I wouldn't fight this move. I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be buying this just yet. <clears throat> just you know, with a, with a day like today, and a report like just came out, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't bode well for the grains. So tough on the farmers. All right, John. Well, listen, right, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, have a great afternoon. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye right. now. All right, guys. Good word for the day. Get some rest. I know it's just Monday. And we're supposed to be fresh as a daisy, right, from the weekend? Yeah, but, you know, why do they call it Monday? And back to the grind. And, you know, sometimes our body gets rest. But when's the last time your soul had some rest? Your spirit, man been a while. Mark 6.31 says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Why did Jesus take time out to rest? So that when he worked, he'd be at his best. So we, we burn the candle at both ends. We're no good to nobody, especially ourselves. Today, he wants you to know that if you don't take a break, you won't get a break. He wants you to survive the long haul, not the short sprint. And the first obstacle you need to overcome is guilt. That's what makes us workaholics. We feel guilty and we tell ourselves there's just so much to do. Jesus handled life a little bit differently. Mark 6.31 Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. No time to eat, too many people coming and going, no time to take care of yourself. Does that possibly describe your life? Some people say it's better to burn out than to rust, great song, but that's not really that great advice, uh, and it's not scriptural. You won't burn out, you don't burn out when you're in the will of God, when it's his strength and not yours. Matthew eleven thirty, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The reason he could say that was because people didn't set his agenda, his heavenly father did. 
Psalm 23, 2. The psalmist said, He makes me to lie down. Wouldn't you rather go to the park by choice than to the hospital by force? The fact is, God won't send you there, but your own lack of wisdom can and will. So today, Jesus is saying the same thing to you. He said to the disciples so long ago, get some rest. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.